was me last week. It took forever to hit that ball. <laughs> no, that wasn't me. But um, thank you all for being here. It's exciting to see all of you and to be a part of New Vintage Church. Uh, it's been a, a crazy journey for me. I'm sure we'll, we'll unpack more of that over time. I know it's been crazy for all of you as well. And, um, you know, I didn't know what to say to start this first, you know, live service back. Um, you know, I, I, you're a church that's been waiting for a pastor uh, for a while, ever since Andy quit. Um, Andy, I hope you're watching, you know. Um, nah, I'm just kidding. You're awesome. And uh, grateful that you uh, handed off well. But um, I know, you know, you've been waiting for a pastor for a while, and then you've been waiting through a pandemic. Uh, and then uh, there's been social unrest in our nation, and there's political divide like we've maybe never seen before, and everybody has a voice on Facebook and Instagram, and everybody's talking trash to each other, and, uh, you know, and then uh, welcome to your first week uh, to finish up this series, go. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't even know what to say. Uh, so I thought I'd start with this. My name's Darren, and um, my, this is my family right here. This is uh, my wife, Molly. Uh, Smith is our son. He's in my arms. Uh, Collins is in the pink. That's Collins over here that was with me. And then Malone is the oldest. She's seven. She's a little shorter than Collins, so don't make a big deal out of that, okay? But, um, and, uh, and so that's my family, and we are excited to be joining all of you. We're a little nervous, you know. Um, you know, we were in Atlanta. My, Molly and I have been in Atlanta for over 20 years, and uh, that was our home, and so uprooting and moving here is a little crazy. So we're grateful for your hospitality, and we're excited to be here. Um, but I still don't know what to say today. So uh, we're going to start with that. Now, I know that um, a lot of you have been uh, watching online on Facebook. Some of you are watching now online, and you're making comments, and uh, we're throwing up emojis, and the hearts are flying everywhere. Uh, and, you know, it's just, I'm like, well, that's a lot of hearts. All right, you know. And, and so... Um, we thought, well, when you transition from like virtual back to live, and there's some still virtual and some still live, it'd be important for us to have emojis uh, here as well, you know? And so we need to have, to know what, what, what you're feeling. I need some instant feedback because you're wearing masks, and I don't even know if what I say is, is connected because I can't see your, your face. I can't see your mouth. Was it funny? Was it bad? Are you yawning? I don't know what's happening. And so this will provide some instant feedback. This one has hearts on it. And some of the guest services are going to pass these out as well. I'll give a few out to the front row. If you don't want one and we come up to you to hand you one, just look at us and go, get away from me. Okay? So totally cool. Let me put my mask back on uh, before I do this. I don't want to come out there close to you. So um, here's one that has hearts on it, and um, that means good, okay? So, Drew, I'll give you that one. Oh, I got it. You okay. can give me some feedback. Here's a big smile, okay? You can keep that and put it in your room. I know it's probably going to keep sake for, for a long, long time. Uh, here's one with like a, just a sad face, kind of, kind of a, like more of a confused face, Jody. Like the one you're giving me right now. Yeah, like why would you give me this? That's exactly right. Here's one with some sunglasses on it, okay? This would be like throwing shade, okay? So... If you, if you don't like what I've said, just put that one up, okay? And then I'll give one more over here. This one is a crying, la you know, laughing emoji. So it's crying. Uh, that means really funny. So if I say something really funny, uh, just throw that up. That'll help me to know uh, how you guys are feeling. So throw those up in the air if you would like to. Uh, if, it's a, if it's a really bad idea, then just uh, throw the sad face. Now, there were no poop emojis in there, so I was a little surprised by that and so I'm grateful too though because I don't need to get trolled live you know what I mean so uh but I, you know if you want to troll me live that's fine too whatever we'll, we'll survive um you know I I uh you know growing up um you know I know there's kids in here today and growing up I had to go to church with my parents as a kid I don't know if you remember that if any of you went to church as a kid with your parents and sat through the main service it's how they used to toughen us up right you know, my parents would be like, if they can sit through this, they'll think raking the leaves is fun, you know. So uh, I get it. There's kids in here, and so we're trying to make this a little fun for them. So if you want to hand that to your kids, whatever you can. But I had this whole message prepared to wrap up the series, Wait For It. And it was this message about uh, Lazarus dying and being raised to life and how Mary and Martha had waited for them, if you know the story. And it's like they're frustrated that it took so long. And then Jesus comes, he raised them to life. And then Jesus in his life... You know, before he dies on the cross, he's like waiting for this thing to come and happen, and he doesn't want it to happen. And he says, 
Lord, if you can't take this, God, if you can't take it from me, take this cup from me, I don't, I don't want to go through this pain, and he was waiting for it, but then he has to die anyway, and so, um, but then he raises back to life, and God changes everything, and so I had this message about how we all have to die to certain things, and sometimes death has to come to us, like something has to die in us before God can raise to life the goodness that he wants to do in us, and as I was writing the message, I was like, man, this is all about death and dying after a pandemic for the first service back and kids in the room. And I was like, this is terrible. Like, so I, I totally abandoned that uh, this morning. And um, no, I didn't. It wasn't this morning. And uh, I rewrote uh, this idea, a different idea that I wanted to give to you just as an idea of we've been waiting through this thing. And then um, sometimes we have moments that we want to end and sometimes we have moments we don't want to end. But what do you do when a moment does come to an end? I feel like the, 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 the virus isn't at an end now, but like it feels like at the end of the year, it's, at some point, it's going to come to an end. And we're not going to always have masks on. We're not going to always be sitting in this, in this way. We're not always going to have to not hug each other. It's not going to last forever. And so what do we do when, when a moment like this comes to an end? Or what do we do when a moment that's good comes to an end? What do we do when we, we have a moment with God that changes our life and we want to just, you know, sit in that moment. What do we do when the moment comes to an end? And so instead of the stories about death, we're going to shift to a story about Jesus uh, casting demons out of somebody into a pig. So um, I'm going to shift to that. I thought that was more friendly, right? <laughs> Poop emoji. All right. Okay. I can't smile. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. <coughs> excuse me. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. And um, so... Uh, we're going to be in Mark chapter 5, but before we get there, if you want to go to your Bibles, you can, you can kind of get there if you get on your phone or whatever, you, whatever your Bible. Um, I'm going to read through it, but uh, we're going to be in Mark chapter 5. Before we get there, the, the question I just have to start is just, have you ever been in a moment yourself that you didn't want to end? Have you ever had a moment like that? Like maybe a, like a really good concert you were at, you know, and you were just like, what? the whole crowd was like, one more song, one more song. Like you got your, your person next to you, you know, you know, and they're like having a great time. You're like... You know, this is the great, you got all your friends around you, and you're like, yeah, throwing shade. You don't like, that's good? I don't know if that's good. That's good. Okay, all right. Okay, you got the shade. Yeah, you got it. You're cool. It's cool. Got it. So, um, so you got, you know, this, these moments that are, that are good like that, or maybe like you've had like, um, you know, if you're a kid in here, maybe you had a sleepover one time. That was like so much fun. You were having a blast, and, um, you know, our, our kids were at a, a place last night, at a house last night. They were getting their nails done and having fun, or like an older you know, a girl was helping them, uh, having fun, swimming with them, and I said, it's time to go. And they were like, Dad, no, you're ruining our lives, you know. And so, um, you know, there's moments that you don't want to end. Or maybe for you, like, uh, it's a dream. Have you ever had a dream you didn't want to end? Like, you're in the middle of a dream, like you're a Jedi Knight or something, you're slaying all the bad guys, or something good is happening in the dream, you're dominating in this dream, and you wake up and you realize, oh, it was a dream, and you literally try to go back to sleep to get back to the spot in the dream that you just were, and you're like, come on, like, uh, you can't get back, didn't want the moment to end, or maybe for some of you, it's just a really good nap, right? Have you ever had like a killer nap where you got on the comfy couch first, and you were like, oh my gosh, this is the best nap, I was so tired, you wake up, there's like slobber on the pillow, that kind of nap, and you, it's such a good nap that you just turn the pillow over and go back to the nap, I mean, it's... None of you do that? Okay, I'm the gross one. Right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, may, there's just times in our lives where maybe it's even been a moment with God. Maybe it's been a, at a camp or it's been at a, on a mission trip or it's been in a church service or a small group or a moment in your own life when God was really moving and you thought, I don't want this to ever change. I want to bottle this up, put it in a bottle and take it with me forever. I always want to feel this way. But the truth of the matter is, Every single moment that all of us experience, every moment always turns into a memory. Every moment turns into a memory. This moment, this morning, first Sunday back, at some point it will come to an end, it will turn into a memory. Every moment we have turns into a memory. And the question is, is there any more than just a memory? Is there more for the moments than just a memory? Is there something we're supposed to do when the moment comes to an end that's beyond just it turning into a memory? Does God have more for us in store than just to take these great moments and turn them into memories? And that's what I want to cover this morning for just a second through this story in Mark chapter 5. I'm going to read through it a little bit. Um, I'm telling you, it's a little bit crazy and freaky and weird. And, uh, you know, maybe you're thinking to yourself, so that's the story you wanted to go with for your first time back live. Cool. Great idea, Darren. Well, just bear with me. Come with me. 
Uh, I think we're going to get to something that's helpful uh, towards the end, but you've got to kind of get through what's happening in the story first. See, Jesus uh, rolls up on the scene. He gets out of the boat after they've been traveling, and, and he comes on the shore with his followers, and this is what happens in chapter 5, verse 1. So they arrived at the other side of the lake in the region of Gerenicism. Um So just, as, just so you know, when you read your Bible, okay, and you, sh- you roll up on places that you can't pronounce, that's okay, all right? And, uh, you know, you can research it, and you can find out where it is and all that stuff. That's easily available on the Google. But it's always fun just to look at it. Don't, don't spend a lot of time. Is it, is it Gerasinesis or is it Geronesis or where, where are they? Look it up if you want to or just Geronesis. Got, got it. That's where they were, all right? And uh, when Jesus climbed out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out from a cemetery to meet him. This man lived among the burial caves and could no longer be restrained even by with a chain. Whenever he was put into chains and shackles, as he often was, he snapped the chains from his wrists and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Day and night he wandered among the burial caves and in the hills, howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. Now, we've struggled with the, with the masks. You know, we've struggled with stay-at-home order. We've struggled with, I don't, I don't want to close my job down. Okay, that's, that's tough for us. Imagine this guy's life. I mean, he's in shackles. People are seeing, he breaks the shackles, so they shackle him again. And what does he do? He wanders through basically uh, graveyards all the time. He just, that's his life. He's, not, he's like, I can't go to Walmart. I can't get, get a job. I can't get food. I can't, I mean, he's literally quarantined for life with no hope. I mean, this guy is stuck in quarantine. Imagine what he's waiting. He's waiting. Like, maybe he's given up all hope. It's just not going to happen for me. I don't know where he is. I don't know where you are in the whole idea of is this ever going to end, but this guy is definitely stuck. But when Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him, ran to meet him, and bowed low before him. With a shriek, he screamed. You guys want me to do the scream? I'm not doing that. No, he, 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 he shrieks the scream. This is how we read our Bible sometimes. Okay? With a shriek, he screamed, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? In the name of God, I beg you, don't torture me. Not what happened. He came up to Jesus and was like, Why? Why are you interfering? Don't torture me! That's what he did. And that brings it a little more to life. Imagine if you're a disciple watching this. You're like, yo, yo, bro. (laughs) Jesus, let's just... uh, Walk on by. <laughs> and uh, Jesus doesn't do that. So isn't it cool? You know, sometimes as a Christian in a place that Christianity isn't all that cool, it's sometimes you get a bad rap for feeling like, you know, you're one of those Christians who judges everybody and hates everybody. That's not our Jesus. Jesus isn't like that at all. In fact, everyone else wanted to put him in chains. Jesus wants to free him. Everyone else wanted to walk past him and avoid him. Jesus walks right up to him. He lets him approach him. See, what what, what would it look like if we could change the name of what Christianity has gotten a bad rap for? We could be more like Jesus. That's what Jesus does. He says, um, uh, for Jesus had, uh, sorry, with a shriek he said all those things. For Jesus, verse 8, had already said to the spirit, come out of the man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus demanded, what's your name? And he replied, my name is Legion, because there are many of us inside this man. Then the evil spirits begged him again and again to send them, not to send them to some distant place. There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on the hillside nearby. Send us into those pigs, the spirit begged. Let us enter them. So Jesus gave them permission. The evil spirits came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the entire herd of about 2,000 pigs plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. Cool passage, Darren. So you're watching this as a disciple. You're watching this as the guy, right? You're watching this as a herdsman. You're watching your pigs. All of a sudden, the pigs are shrieking and running over the hill because Jesus told these spirits to go somewhere. 
If you're one of his followers, one of the followers of Jesus, you are just like, you're like, we've seen him do some stuff, but what was that? I mean, that's crazy. That is insane. And I know for some of us, like, this whole idea of, like, evil spirits and God having power and Jesus having power and Jesus doing miracles, it's like a game changer for some of us. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a, um, a deal breaker for some of us because it's like, well, I don't believe in that stuff. But just for a second, let's assume if there is a God, if there is a God, and if there is a God who's strong and powerful and good, then it would make sense that that same God would have the power to do things like overcome evil and, and tell evil where to go. So it's not outside of the realm, but I get it if you listen to this and you're like, that's crazy. So just don't, let, don't get too hung up on the whole, is this thing, you know, what really happened here? Because we're going to go somewhere in just a second. So don't get stuck there if you're getting stuck there. Let's move past that for just a second. But imagine if you're the guy who's had the evil spirits. You don't care how crazy it looks. You don't care what the disciples think. You just know, oh, I'm free. Oh my gosh, oh my God. You just freed me, God. Like, are you, are, you must be God. Like, I haven't felt this way in years. This is the greatest moment of my life. Like, I, I want to, this, this is amazing that this just happened to me. In that moment, it was one of the greatest moments of that man's life. A moment he probably did not want to come to an end. A moment he'd been waiting for and waiting for and maybe forgotten it could ever happen. And I don't know if you've had any of those moments where you're like, I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I don't think it's ever going to happen. I just want you to know that this man is an example of the fact that our Heavenly Father can break through all the waiting and all the hopelessness and all the fear and he can bring freedom through it. And so uh, what happens next is predictable. Uh, verse 14, the herdsmen fled to the nearby town and the surrounding countryside, spreading the news as they ran. People rushed out to see what happened. A crowd soon gathered around Jesus, and they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons. He was sitting there, fully clothed and perfectly sane, and they were all afraid. Then those who had seen what happened told the others about the demon-possessed man and the pigs. They're like, bro, no, this is what happened. He was crazy, breaking the chains, running around like a wild man. Whoosh, whoosh, pigs, down the He's cool. Look at him sitting right there. Just fine. He's fully clothed. Everyone's was like, what? That's crazy. Verse 8, 17. And the crowd began pleading with Jesus to go away and leave them alone. <laughs> they were like, Jesus, I don't know who you are or what you're doing, but you got to go. And just, just as a side note to you, notice what Jesus does. Jesus doesn't say, no, 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 I'm not going. You need me. He could have. He could have imposed himself upon the people and said, you're crazy. I'm the, I'm the maker of the universe. I'm the one who's going to save the world. You don't know who I am. You need me. You don't know nothing. You need me here. But instead, Jesus says, all right, cool. And I think the lesson we take from that is simply we should never impose. We can, we can propose Jesus to people, but we should never impose him upon people. You know, you, you, don't, you don't force people to believe what you believe. And I think this is a really good lesson for us in this time right now of the Facebook fighting that's going on. Like, we can propose our ideas, that's okay, but let's not impose our ideas on people. Let's not impose people with what we believe. Let's not yell at people and fight people. Let's be like Jesus, who's like, I mean, think about it. If Jesus had a Facebook account, he could slay everybody. I mean, he's, he knows it all. He could get on there and be like, well, actually, that's, that's not factual. Let me see your facts or, you know, unfriend me if, you know, whatever. Like, it's, 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 you could do all, he could do all, he could slay people, right? But he does it. He chooses instead when people say, hey, I don't want you here. He goes, oh, I'm not going to argue with you. I'll just go. See, we, we can propose him and we should propose him. But we shouldn't impose him on anybody. Love people where they are. Let them find him themselves as we love them right where they are. Jesus loved the people even though they didn't want him to stay. And so he lovingly walked away. Now look what happens with the guy, though. This is what I'm trying to get to. This is like the meat. This is the potatoes right here. This is what we're going for, okay? This is all set up until that. And then as Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. He said, Jesus, I don't want this moment to end. i got to come with you. I don't want it to end. 
And about, I don't know, six months ago, I sat in my house in Atlanta and I said, Jesus, can I get in the boat with you? I don't want Atlanta to end. I've had a good moment here. I've had a good 20 years of moment here. I, I, I was at a, a, a big church with lots of friends and a really good community and a really safe environment. And I figured out how to make money here and we got a house and we got everything set up and we got the kids in the school and everything's really good the way that it is, God. I don't, I don't want to, can let me just get in the boat with you and stay with you, Jesus, right where I am. Let me just stay comfortable right here. And Jesus said, nah, sorry, bro. You can't get in the boat. I got something else for you. I have something more for you. I have something different for you. You can't stay comfortable in this moment. This moment for you and your family at Atlanta is coming to an end. It's going to become a memory. But there's more than just a moment turning into a memory. Here's what he says to the man who wants to get in the boat and keep the moment going. He says to him, Jesus said, nope, go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. So the man started off to visit the ten towns of that region and began to proclaim the great things Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed at what he told them. Jesus said, I have more for you than to just have this moment turn into a memory and you come stay in the boat with me. He said, I want you to go. I want you to start a movement. Because God wants more for us than to just participate uh, and experience moments that turn into memories. God wants us to participate in a movement. He wants us to go and tell. See, for some of us, we've encountered God in a way that's changed our life. And we can't keep that quiet to ourselves. See, there's, there are people who need to know. There are people all over this place that need to hear what happens here. They need to hear what happens here. And we can't just have nice moments that turn into memories that make us feel good. God has called us into so much more than that. He wants us to go from, he wants us to make great moments and make great memories, but we, we gotta have those things turn into movements because we've gotta go. What do we do when a moment comes to an end? Jesus tells this guy, you move. You move, you get on the move, you go. When, when a moment comes to an end with Jesus, with God, when you connect with him, you move. You don't stay in your seat. You don't just do the comfortable thing. You move. You go. You, you create a part of a movement. And I, I just want to, you know, I want to be a part of that. As we leave Atlanta and we go, okay, we can't stay in the moment there anymore. We're moving to Santa Rosa, to, to Sonoma County. We're doing it because we feel like, we sense like God is saying to us, go be part of a movement. Don't just make moments and memories. Create a movement. And that's what we want to be a part of at New Vintage. It's what we know that, that you want to be a part of, that many of you want to be a part of. And the movement is a movement just, just like what Jesus did for this man. It's a movement of freeing people from where they really are. And some of you have been freed already, and you're free in Christ, and you know what it means to have freedom. Some of you in here, you're still waiting on your moment. And that's okay. We want you to find it here as you discover that there's a God who truly loves you. And then we want to help others in our city know that in all the hopelessness of this world that we're seeing, there is hope in Jesus. He's a Jesus who approaches the broken, the chained, the shackled, the crazy, the weird, the strange, the whatever. Jesus approaches and he knows just what to do to give them freedom. And we want to be a part of a movement that helps free people from that. It's an exciting time. It's a, uh, it's a really cool time. But there are people that need to hear what's happening here. So I, as, as we pray, we're going to sing a, a song here to close up. I want you to be thinking about who are the people that need to know that God is bigger than their current circumstances? Who are the people who need to know what happens in here? Who are the people in your life that need an invitation to come and see? Just come and see. And see, when, when we invite people to church and they put up all the defenses and they go, well, well, they're this way, they're that way, they're this way, that way. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. All you have to do is say, well, just come and see. You just come and see. I and mean, if you hate it, that's fine. The pastor said you can even make fun of him. You can troll him if you want to. But just come and see. Just come and see. And we invite people to come and see so that this isn't just a, a nice place for moments and memories, but we turn it into a movement where God changes the city that changes us, and we get to experience a whole new movement together. So 
Thanks for having our family. Thanks for wel welcoming us. We're excited to be here. We're excited about New Vintage, and you guys are awesome. So let me pray for us, and we're going to sing this song to remind us um, of the moment when Jesus came out of the grave that changed everything. God, uh, thank you for this group of people. God, thank you that you've called us into more than just moments and memories. That Jesus, you ask us to be a part of a movement that just like this man, that you said, nope, you got to go home and tell people because there's people who need to hear what just happened here. God, we want to go tell people as well. We want to go love people right where they are. Not to, not to impose you upon people, but to propose the idea that maybe there is a God who frees people from their chains, that they can come and see. God, we want this church to be a part of a movement that changes lives, families, homes, that meets people right where they are. Thanks for letting us be a part of it. God, give us the courage and the boldness to invite people to come and see. God, use us. We can't do it, but you can. Jesus, thanks for this song we're going to sing that reminds us that you came out of the grave, that you defeated death. We don't have to be afraid of it anymore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I was buried beneath my sin. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my dream till I made. Come on, would you stand with us? I was breathing, but not. My failures I tried to hide. It was mine. Till I came. You called my name. Come on. I ran out of that pain. Out of the dark. You 
it for the band, Jeff and everybody. Um, you all probably have no idea how difficult it is to, um, to put together online worship like they've been working on over the last several weeks. Uh, a lot of coordinating, and they did a great, great job. So awesome, awesome work. At this time, we're going to dismiss you row by row um, like a wedding. And so um, the ushers will come down and dismiss you row by row. Myself, if you'd like to say hey, I'm going to be out in the, uh, outside in the um, courtyard hanging out out there uh, so I can greet you guys and say hi. So thanks for being here. We love you. And we'll see you in two weeks back here July 12th. So thanks. See you.